Welcome to Made of Ale 2, where in a moment I'll be joined by the BBC Singers, uh, where we're going to be rehearsing and performing Mendelssohn's beautiful Hear My Prayer. And in this we're going to be able to take apart the music and hopefully you can get involved and follow this and it will be part of your preparations for singing this really beautiful piece. So please welcome the BBC Singers. I think the first thing to say is, you know, you've got to have someone prepared to, to take up the mantle of singing the solo because that's quite a hard thing to do. But assuming there is someone, then the, the choir has to do really is support them. And it's not that difficult. It really isn't. And it won't take you long to learn the notes. Uh, it, it's just really a matter of m making sure you accompany the singer. But you also have your own um, identity. Um, and you need to think about what that identity is. It's a good piece, both stamina-wise, you know, you have a range of dynamics and, you know, kind of singing loudly and quite quietly as well, you know, so you have a, a wide range in such a little piece as well. There is a, a good strong bit, uh, it's almost, almost a bit like a good Welsh hymn, The Enemy Shouted, and that's our chance to let rip a bit, and uh, that, that's, that's always a good moment. Well, I think that Mendelssohn has always been, you know, a composer people love singing. And it's, it's great to find someone who did so much for our choral culture, actually, in the 19th century, and really had sustained from then. And really needed, we need to know now that choirs still somehow connect with this uh, ep area of repertoire, which is really important to us. It's always best to get sessions going by singing rather than talking. Uh, conductors are known for talking too much and so we're going to start straight away with the music and then we'll talk about things as we go along. Good, thank you very much. Before we go on, can we just go back to um, look at one or two things, folks? The first thing to ask you is on the second line of 11, basically when you take this theme up on, the second, on this particular line here, we need to begin, I think, at a more mezzo forte than forte. So building through the phrase, followed by tenors, and tenors a little bit less in the third bar in order that we can hear the altos more clearly. And I think sopranos, you could be forte at this point, so you really hear you there. That's the first thing. And then in the bottom line, we need to just take a little time out at the end of the second bar, altos and sopranos, just a quaver out there. And the general tempo of this section needs to feel as if it's moving forwards a little bit more. So, oh, for the wings, taking flight. So let's just try it a little, a little, a little more um, speedily here. Let's go straight in at the beginning of this line. So. And at the end of the bar, oh, for the wings, for the wings, use the last beat of the bar to really take us into the next voice. So one more time. Thank you so much. When we get to this point um, in this section, I think with a little bit more, again, forward movement, we'll, get, we'll add something extra to the music. In the wilderness, really keep through, going through these lines. It's just a little bit too noty. Da, da, ti, pa, pa, pa. A little bit more of the line of the music. Can we take it exactly from page 12?
Excellent. Thank you. By doing it in this way, this allows us the chance to now relax the tempo back to maybe the beginning of the uh, section here, Oh, for the Wings of Dove, right back to that tempo. So we just put a little bit of a writ in here and then in joins Emma again. So don't be frightened, if you're a conductor, to actually send the whole of that section maybe a little bit more quickly than it's actually marked in the copy. Can I just ask that in this last section, beginning on page 14, this is always very, very difficult, I think, to find the right balance in order that we hear enough of the choir, uh, but actually never drowning the soloist. And particularly, I think, top of page 14, basses uh, and tenors, it's really piano, really piano here with only a little crescendo into the second line. And so that at the beginning of the second line, we can still hear the soloist very clearly. That's the first point. In the bottom line of page 14, I would suggest that this should be marked right down to pianissimo. In the wind. So it's just right in the background here, right through the section, beginning then to get louder at the top line of the next page. So and remain there forever at rest. Um, the diminuendo, before Emma comes in on the last bar here, should begin, I think, as soon as you start that last note. For so by, by the third beat, actually, it's piano. It's piano by then, and getting softer and softer. And for conductors, the end of this is very important that you really listen to the soloist so we actually catch the breath. And then make the last chord together. Maybe we could do that first. Let's, I mean, can we go from the last, um, the, the second last bar of the uh, second line, so, and remain there, yeah? Lovely. And when the tenors went to the C to the B, nice and, nice and bright down our last note. Thank you. Now can we go to page 14 and look at the top of the 14 to see if we can get the balance here. Um, maybe I could ask, um, ask one of the bases, uh, what's difficult about this particular phrase in terms of the, the, the way you can make this sound ha work really well? Charles, could you just tell us a little bit of, about uh, this? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what's difficult about it is you haven't got very long to breathe, and then you've got to come in again uh, gently and uh, rather beautifully at this point. So, um, <laughs> one of the one of the things I think about when I've got an entry like that to do is um, breathe in, uh, make the shape of my mouth the uh, the shape for the vowel that I'm about to sing. So, in this case, uh, it's O. So I've gone. Would I rove? Oh, try and keeping my trying to keep my mouth. 